I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about adoptees and relationships. Not a lot of great information is out there about adoption and relationships. And a lot of you guys are misinformed about the effects of an adoption and how it would be on a partner or somebody in a romantic relationship. Right. One of the things that I see the most is, you know, somebody was adopted, your partner was adopted, and you're like, but they got adopted into a great family. Right. This family is wonderful. This guy who adopted her was great. He treated her so well. Well, even if it was perfect, which it's never perfect, there are a lot of issues that are going to come out of that. And Margaret has tremendous experience when it comes to adoption. So if you are in a situation where your, your partner, your ex was adopted, talk to Margaret. Okay. And what I want to say today is that many of you are talking to Margaret and I'm really pleased about that because I think it's information that as Coach Craig said is not out there as much as I wish it were. Mm -hmm. um, that adoptees have a much more difficult time than most people ever imagine. And kind of, you know, we've considered adoption the most wonderful institution in the world, and it is still the best option for people whose families will never be able to take them back. But it's not without problems, mm -hmm. okay? And by the time you're even now, um, and we're supposed to be a little more enlightened than we were before. Mm -hmm. We think of adoption as a wonderful institution that makes sure that kids have permanent families. But when a child is born to someone, they're born to their mother, and then they find themselves in the arms of someone else. And we always thought they were too young to know and they had no idea. Mm -hmm. What we are beginning to understand more and more from the research is that being placed with another person is very disturbing to a baby who knows what their mother smells like and what she feels like um, and overall has a physical sense of her, mm -hmm. knows her voice as well. Yeah. Okay. So that the baby is confused early on in life. And we've always thought that, you know, she was adopted at birth into a wonderful family and she'll be just fine. No, she won't, because there's always going to be a disconnect somewhere. And there are magnificent adoptive families who do a spectacular job. But unfortunately, what usually happens is that when the child starts to ask questions about their biological origins, the adoptive parents are hurt. And what goes through their head is, well, why would they be asking about those people who didn't or couldn't keep them when we're the ones who have taken care of them? Mm -hmm. And it is no disrespect or lack of love for the adoptive parents. No. It's a wish to know your origins. And I think everyone deserves to know your origins. So historically in this country, what we have done is we have shrouded adoption in secrecy so that to this day, it's difficult to get your adoption records. Now, most states have had to come up with a process where you can get some basic information and it's somewhat helpful to people. Any information you get is helpful to people. But the idea has always been they don't need to know about what happened to themselves in the beginning. If we don't tell them that, they'll never remember. They will remember in their body and their soul and every other place. They may not consciously remember, but the memories are all there. Okay, That there has been a major disruption in their lives. 
And kids quickly learn that the people around them don't want them asking a lot of questions and will shut them down when they try. Mm -hmm. Okay, And this is addressed magnificently by two authors I'm going to tell you about a little later and whose books I highly recommend. So adoptees set off into the world never as secure as people who were able to stay with their people. Now, if adoptive families knew that, understood that, and weren't hurt by that, it would be a whole lot easier if adopted families could say to children, of course you wonder where you came from. And this is the information we have, and we're going to give it to you straight, when you're old enough, of course. And, you know, we still even hear about people finding out they were adopted years later. And they'll tell you that always in their heart of hearts, they felt like they oh, were yeah. a cat being raised in a family of dogs. Okay? Yeah. You know, I remember a client that I worked with years ago that they were telling the truth to about who the stepfather was. Oh, right. I remember that case also. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they were saying the stepfather was the biological father, yeah. but it was not the biological father. No, it was father, not the biological father. And they did father. not want to tell them the truth. And you were very angry about that. I was very <laughs> angry about that. And I'm sure the child was very angry when she found out the truth, which of course she was inevitably going to do. I don't know if she still has. And that was a long she time ago. She not have. I thought she was going to... They, they didn't want to tell her because they didn't want her to act up. However, she, she was, was already, already <laughs> acting out, which is why she was in therapy with Craig. <laughs> so my position was tell this kid the truth and then we can all deal with the real issue instead of sort of tiptoeing around the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Hopefully she found out. I certainly hope she did. And she didn't like the stepfather particularly, even though he was pretty good to her, if I recall. From what I can remember, yeah. he wasn't too bad. He yeah. was a pretty good guy. Yeah. She needed to know that he didn't have to be nice to her. He was doing it out of the goodness of his heart. Um, it's hard to remember because it's been a very long time. But mother, maybe... mother could only think of stopping the kid from acting out at all. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's part of it. The secrecy is a major problem. And the other thing the secrecy does is it says to the kid, your origins are so awful, you can't know who they are. Okay? How terrible your biological family must be. We must, if we have to keep them a secret from you, what would happen if you found out, oh my God. All right? Yeah. Now it's much easier now than it used to be, and of course the computer has made it thousands of times easier than it used to be. All right? But I still have a major feeling for kids who grow up adopted because it's difficult. And you want to talk about disenfranchised grief. Now we talked about disenfranchised grief a few months ago when we talked about a woman who broke up with her college boyfriend. And everyone around her gave her no support and said, what do you mean you're grieving? You broke, you broke out of the up room. with yeah. him, okay? Yep. But adoptee's grief is never acknowledged. All the adults want to hear from them is how grateful they are to have been adopted. And I heard somebody in an email coaching say to me recently, well, she was adopted by uh, one of the sets of grandparents but they spoiled her. What exactly does that mean? <laughs> well, I, treated her like a human being? Yeah. <laughs> gave her love and attention? Yeah, gave her love and attention. Now, Craig and I are both only children. And if you're an only child, you hear all Technically, the Technically, I do yeah. have half siblings. Yeah, you have half. But you, <laughs> yeah, but you didn't quite grow up with them. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, you always say, oh, you're an only child, well, you must be spoiled. Well, what is it with this spoiled thing? Did I spoil myself? Did my parents spoil me? What does that mean? Yeah. Um, I get tired of it after a while. Well, I hope they spoiled her. If that means give her attention and love and so forth and so on. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to say I'm very pleased that I'm receiving all these calls from adoptees. And it isn't just from adoptees. I got a call recently from the son of adoptees. And I've heard from other members of the Adoption Triangle. And it's difficult on everybody. The Adoption Triangle is the child, the biological family, and the adoptive family. Okay? And that's called the Adoption Triangle. And it's very difficult to get all those parts moving together. 
it does sometimes happen and that's a wondrous and wonderful thing okay um, that everybody meets everybody and we all get along at least on the surface um, there's been a TV program on lately about grown-ups looking for their parents and eventually finding them through an agency and the agency guides them through meeting them for the first time and so forth and so on and it would tear your heart right out if you listen to it I don't know if it's still on and I couldn't even tell you the name of it lost and lost and found maybe um, I don't know yeah but if you've seen it believe me you remember it because someone will know and put a comment yeah, yeah it's always very moving to watch it um, and you hear the parents story you know, I was drinking, I was using drugs, I was really young, I went to jail, I had no choice, etc., etc. There was an adoption um, finding agency in Boston that used to be called Orphan's Voyage. And their view of the whole thing is it doesn't matter what you find, it's that you found it and you know. You know, whether you grew up in a mansion, um, or a hovel somewhere. It's your family and you have a right to know who they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I've had people say to me if I were if I walked by my mother on the street I wouldn't know her. I, wow. wouldn't, I don't know what she looks like or um, I have no idea what nationality I am. How about the situations where the mother was in plain sight? Uh, in other words, oh, I thought it was my sister. Now, you know where I heard the most of those stories was in the prison. I had several guys who grew up in that situation. I was told that my aunt was my mother. Mm -hmm. But I had a connection with my real mother and I always knew it. Um, and believe it or not, um, in the prison, and it was young guys, 18, 19. Yeah. Right. I had that come up recently yes. in Skype. Yes, it's not okay. People have a right to know who they are. And can you imagine denying parent and child to be dick parent and child? For whose sake? The neighbors? Yeah. You know. Right. Um, nothing is so bad that it can't be talked about or dealt with. You know? Um, and certainly not adoption. That's not a bad thing. And most people aren't adopted at birth. No, most people are not adopted at birth. Certainly it's better. Um, but it's still, you know, it's still a wound. No, and what happens is people get, people go into the foster care system. Uh, if they're lucky, they get an adoptive family or sometimes the foster family decides to adopt them. And so they do get a home. But by the time they get to the adoptive home, they've been through the original trauma of losing mom and their family of origin and they've been through several placements. And by the end of that, they are not in a good mood. They are really angry and really sad. Um, but oftentimes it comes out more, more often in angry. Um, and they have to be helped with that. But we naively think that they should just be grateful because they got adopted. They're angry that they lost their family, they're angry that they've been through all these placements, and they're angry that it has taken usually two years to adopt them to get through the court process. Yeah. Okay? So these are not happy campers by the time they hit adolescence. However, if you're willing to work with them around the real issues and what happened to them, they're not at all difficult to deal with. It's having to keep it secret and not talk about it and look grateful that does them in. And we often don't prepare adoptive parents well enough to understand what kind of problems they're going to have. I hate to say it, but very commonly they've been sexually abused, if not in their family of origin, in one of the foster homes. Yeah. So they come to their adoptive families with a bunch of problems. And I wish we had a more systematic way of training therapists to deal with adoption. I have had to tell therapists who have degrees from prestigious universities that it is important to talk about adoption with someone. I've had other therapists say to me, well is that really important? I mean they grew up, they were with these people for a long time and they grew up the same way as anybody else. No they didn't because by the time they were you know two months old they had already lost their original family. And you can't even imagine what that no, would be like. No you cannot even Unless you've imagine. had it. If right. you've had a child, and you're a parent, yeah. 
think about your own child when they were a young age, an infant, you know, right. two years old, three years old, whatever, and taking them away from you and the family. Could you imagine how devastated they would be? Right. Just devastated. And it doesn't make any difference how wonderful the adoptive family is. Well, does. yes, it does. It, it mean, helps, but... Yeah, if they're, um, you know, approached, you know, in a warm way and welcomed and so forth and so on. But, but it's I, extremely traumatic. Extremely traumatic. And I have one person who was told by the social worker she had had, she'd been in several foster placements, she was left at the hospital by her parents. They just walked off and left her there. Um, oh, and yeah. when she finally had to fly from one end of her state to the other, and she was taken on the plane with a social worker she had never seen before, and taken to this totally strange family, and expected to be grateful. I had a friend um, that was abandoned at SeaWorld oh with his siblings. Lord. His parents left oh. him and his two siblings at SeaWorld and just abandoned them there. How horrible. Right? Yeah. Could you imagine? Yeah. No, I can't imagine. Ugh, how God. old was he when that happened? I don't know how old. I know he was younger, though. Wow. Wow. I think he was like probably like five or six. Five or six. Because yeah. I don't think he remembers them that well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are terrible things that do, in fact, happen. And usually when you hear the parents' story, it's understandable. And the other thing is, I have also worked with people who gave up children for adoption. Okay? And that is lifetime grief. I have never had anybody say, well, I did it and I'm glad. I did it and it was the best thing. I have had people grieving years and years later. And at one point in my career, I remember it was at 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon, I saw the lady who had given up three children for adoption. Uh, and at four o'clock, I saw a child who had been given up. And I really wanted to just let them talk to each other, you know? Um, which I don't think I could finagle. I think I tried. <laughs> um, because it would have been great for the, you know, for the child to see how upset her mother had probably been about it all her life, you know? Nobody ever grew up and said, I want to have my kid adopted, all right? Um, all right, so funny thing that adoption would come up in love relationships, of course, right? All of our love relationships have everything to do with our love history and so forth and so on. And it can be very difficult for adoptees. If you think about it, if you lost your original family and say we're in three foster homes, would you be in a hurry to attach to anybody? No. 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 Why would you do that to yourself? So people do get into relationships with adoptees, and of course adoptees want, deserve, no one deserves a good relationship more than an adoptee, but oftentimes they really have to work at it, mm -hmm. um, to work through the trust issues and the, and the attachment issues. Um, because sometimes kids really manage to attach to adoptive families and it goes well, other times they simply cannot. Um, and I've heard of a couple of relationships recently where the, the adoptee was sort of doing an on-again, off-again thing with their partner and seemed to be more comfortable with that, and it made perfect sense to me. All of their relationships had been on-again, off-again. I'm in this home, I'm in that home, you know? Yeah. Um, but I've also heard many success stories because there's nothing in this world that's too awful to talk about or that can't be helped if you're willing to work at it and look at it. But I just want to repeat one or two general statements. None of the difficult things that happen to adoptees are their fault, okay? And most adopted people think there's something wrong with them. Was I not cute enough? Was I not lovable enough? Did I do something wrong? Why didn't they find a way to keep me? Yeah. Okay. And, how, and then you'll find situations where it's like they gave one or two siblings away, but then the mother had like three more right. with the same father. Who they raised. Who yeah. they raised. Oh. Can you imagine yeah, the that anger? that would just... Can you imagine the anger? And it wouldn't make... I mean, it wouldn't be the adoptive parents' fault either. I'm sure they adopted in good faith. But here are these furious children. Yes, and with good reason. Yeah. 
and with good reason. But we don't really prepare adoptive parents for all of this. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not fair. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to say, if you're any part of the adoption triangle, the birth mother, the adoptive parent, or the adoptee, there is, you don't have to be alone. There is all kinds of stuff out there that will help you. On Facebook, there's tons of stuff. There are websites. There's all kinds of things for whatever part of the adoption triangle that you are. And there are two particular authors that I think are wonderful and I want to recommend to you. Um, Betty Jean Lifton, L-I-F-T-O-N, who died, I think, in about 10 years ago, um, was an adoptee herself and wrote a landmark book called Journey of the Adopted Self. Um, if you want to buy it, you can get it on Amazon easily, but buy the hardcover because the soft cover has such little print you'll never read it, okay? <laughs> but whatever part of the adoption triangle you're part of, this book is a gem. Um, it starts out talking about Moses in the bulrushes. We never did know where he came from. And Peter Pan and the Lost Boys. Um, and it's that kind of an elegant book. It's got wonderful literary references and a host of information. Yeah. And she talks about kids going into the ghost kingdom. The ghost kingdom would be how kids fantasize about their family of origin when they don't know. Um, they can make themselves the children of kings and princes and all sorts of nifty things. And if they're not allowed to talk about it, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. They go into kind of a fantasy world. The other writer who I recently discovered is named Nancy Verrier, V-E-R-R-I-E-R. -R -E -R. And she is an adoptive parent and wrote a very well-known book called The Primal Wound. And I read some of her material and it's absolutely excellent. Okay, um, certainly in the same category as my old friend Betty Jean Lifton. So I would recommend either of them to, to you. And if you don't remember their names, just look up Books on Adoption and you'll get lists and lists and lists. So don't be alone with this. There are websites where you can just talk about your circumstances. There are websites that will help you search, etc., uh, etc. Et so please reach out in whatever way you can. All right. Okay. Margaret has had a lot of training, a lot of uh, experience mm -hmm. with adoption, and knows it better than any therapist I've known. Yeah. And it's been a specialty of hers for years. And, you know, that's why she has such a great understanding of attachment. Because that is why. You know, and that is how I came to it. And mental health. Mm -hmm because it's all correlated yep. and you know the trauma you experience from an adoption especially if it's in those first couple of years you know really will have a direct impact on your mental health your level of anxiety you're going to be a lot more likely to find somebody with you know who's narcissistic or borderline personality disorder or any of the other uh, personality disorders because they didn't attach well, or, and there was right. that trauma there. Right. They never had an opportunity to. Yeah. Uh, that is absolutely true. And so, of course, it's going to have a massive impact in their ability to do a romantic relationship long term. Yeah. Uh, and remember, we're talking about the disenfranchised grief. Nobody ever, you know, meets an adoptee and says, oh my God, this person's grief must be awful. It's, oh, you know, this person is the product of a wonderful adoption, mm. even if it's wonderful, you know. There's a lot of grief involved. And again, by disenfranchise, we mean grief that nobody recognizes, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully this information will be helpful to you. I know not all of you will be in a situation where adoption is involved, but for those of you that are, it will give you some insight into understanding what your partner has been through. And, you know, if you are in that kind of situation, I highly recommend you do a coaching with Margaret. She's got tremendous experience. Of course, if you want to get my help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works, works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. 
Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. Yes, I am. Feel free to sign up with me. So just click on Margaret on the top of the website to get with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.